When I was back there in high school, I was known as W.S., my initials. It was an affectation, but I insisted that everyone call me by them. Call me W.S. But W.S. is also the title of a famous ghost story by the British writer L.P. Hartley. The plot of W.S. is simple. A novelist named Walter Streeter receives a series of strange and vaguely threatening postcards from someone who identifies themselves as W.S. Gradually, Streeter comes to believe that W.S. is actually one of his fictional characters, William Stainsforth. William Stainsforth, now in human form, a character in whom Streeter invested all the vile and evil aspects, all the wickedness of his own personality. Eventually, Streeter meets W.S. in the flesh. It does not end well. Well, the guys razzed me about the story about W.S. back then. But then, they razzed me about everything. My story begins with a postcard as well. A picture of the harbor in my old hometown back east, a place I hadn't set foot in for over 25 years. There was no indication as to who sent the card. But there was a message... Have you forgotten us, W.S.? Well, seeing as I don't know who you are, I don't really see how I could forget you. Oh, I had vivid, too vivid memories of my old hometown. Memories I did try to forget or repress. I was not happy there, to put it mildly. Still, I suspect most of the people there would have forgotten about me a long time ago. Except for one, uh, particular group. However, my wife, Dr. Curious, was out of province caring for some older family members. So I wondered if she had sent it as a joke. Not that it was her kind of joke. As for forgetting her and the folks back home, why, I spoke to them by phone several times a week, so I was hardly forgetting them. I didn't think my wife had sent the postcard. But then who? Oh, well, must be a mistake, I shrugged. But still I wondered. The next postcard showed the Mackinac Bridge, which connects Michigan's upper and lower peninsulas. All it said was, We haven't forgotten you, W.S. I began to have concrete suspicions as to who was sending the cards. As I mentioned earlier, there was a group of, uh, individuals who still remembered me. Remembered me because they hated me. Still, it had been many years since our last encounter. Surely they had decided to leave me in peace. Or perhaps not. Another postcard came the next day. It showed a picture of Superior Street in downtown Duluth, Minnesota. The message read, Shades of Kerr Street, A. W. S. What the hell? Kerr Street was where I grew up, where I had first encountered them. It was true that the one time I was in Duluth on a foggy, rainy night, 
the gritty urban vibe did indeed remind me of the mean street where I grew up and where I first heard about them. It had to be them, and the next postcard confirmed it. It came from North Dakota and had been mailed in Jamestown and showed a picture of a jackalope. The jackalope is a fearsome critter a mythical creature that resulted from the crossing of a jackrabbit and an antelope, an animal that could not only run fast, but could leap incredible distances. Predators couldn't catch it, and if they did, they would have little chance against the prongs of its antlers. The message was simple. What are the night floaters? W.S. So what are the night floaters? <laughs> well, if you've never heard of them, here's the standard definition. Floating heads, a.k.a. night floaters or floaters, are an anomalous phenomena reported from various places in Canada and throughout North America. The name refers to the ability of certain individuals to detach their heads from the trunks of their bodies, the heads then being able to fly or float at will. They are said to attack unsuspecting victims, biting them, and sometimes even killing them. They are also able to animate their headless bodies in order to chase and attack victims. The night floaters had been the terror of my youth. There was a nest or coven of them in the town where I grew up, and they had victimized me from a very young age. I think I had gone by my initials in high school in a vain attempt to try to hide my identity from them. <laughs> yeah, right. And in the end, I had left town because of them, to get away from them. But they found me, and now they were coming for me, each card mailed from some place closer and closer to me. First my hometown, then Michigan, then Duluth, then North Dak, and now they were here. For the very last postcard showed the provincial legislative building, which was about a mile from my house. It read, See you soon, W.S. They were coming for me, but what could I do? Go to the police? They wouldn't have heard of the night floaters, and they would think I was nuts. Even people in my hometown who had seen them with their own eyes denied their existence, denied that the night floaters were real. I thought about catching a plane and joining Dr. Curious back east. But what if they followed me there? I certainly wouldn't want them harassing the old people. The fact they were harassing me was bad enough. Besides, I had commitments. I had booked time in the recording studio. I, I had YouTube videos to make. No, I would stay and go at it with them head to head. Ouch. <laughs> That was a bad choice of words. But but what could they really do to me, besides nothing? Scare me? Well, they scared me before, and I'm still here. And so I went about my business and went to bed as, as normal and in my empty house, and nothing happened that night. But the next night. I woke up to fetid 
air blowing on me, the bad breath of an ugly male head hovering in the air just inches above my face. It was the ugly face of a man I didn't recognize, but he had the night floater look, thin, dark, pockmarked, with long greasy locks and burning red eyes. But I was ready for him. I had slept with a hammer under my pillow, and I swung it at him with serious intent to harm. But he eluded me. The head, his head, floated out into the hall, and I was up out of bed and racing down the hallway after him when I collided with his body. I say his body, his, because even though it stood on two feet and was actually walking, it didn't have a head. But what it did have was a pair of huge hands with muscular arms, which began choking the life out of me. I tried to get loose to fight back, but, but he, it, was too strong for me. I was on the verge of passing out when I heard a loud plop, plop, and found myself floating in air. Or at least my head was. My head was floating in air, in, in midair. I was now a wretched night floater myself. I heard my house fill with infernal laughter as I tried to reattach my head to my body. And now, twelve hours later, I'm still trying to attach it. It simply won't go back on. What am I going to do without a head? What is Dr. Curious going to say? Uh, how can I make any more YouTube videos? What am I going to do, dear listeners? What am I going to do? Except say, April Fools. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Warren, and I write and tell original ghost stories and original horror stories featuring such cryptids as the night floaters, werewolves, and the black-eyed children. So again, please consider subscribing. Please help me to reach my goal of 2,500 subs in 2022. Till midnight. Cheers. Pictures used in today's video, courtesy of Pix here, that's PX here, while the music was the classic Lightless Dawn by that patron of the internet, Kevin McLeod. No foolin'.